Lord Jesus, thank you for this beautiful morning. Thank you for another Sunday in our lives. Another Sunday where we can worship you together as one body. We want to lift up praises to you. You deserve all the glory and all the praise from the entire world. And that's what we want to do this morning together. Amen.
pleasure to be here with you this morning, lifting up our name, lifting our voices to you, Father God. It is our pleasure and it is our joy, Father, to be with you. Thank you, Jesus.
words when you sing them out. Nothing, we can't hold on to anything that's going to separate us from him. No matter what the world tries to tell us, no matter what our bodies try to tell us, no matter what our minds try to tell us, thank you, Father God. Nothing can separate us from your love.
lift up your voice to him.
the Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. Thank you that our souls just de delight thank completely you, in you. God. Thank you. We thank you that this is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you that we are just constantly full and overflowing with your life. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. creation waits. All creation waits and is longing for the freedom of the sons of God made known. Even we ourselves purified by hope. When you're revealed, we will be like you. All creation Be like 
Father, that with all that we have and all that we are, Father, that the best is still yet to come, perpetually in you for all of eternity, Lord, that the best is yet to come, Father God, where we will receive our glorious bodies, Lord, and know completely, 100%, that we are yours, that we are you, that you are us, Father God, that we are one. That at that time, Father God, when you're revealed, we will know completely that we are one. And we look forward expectantly with hope for that day, Father God. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, worship team. I don't want this to stop. <laughs> Um, hello everyone, welcome, a lot of new faces. My name is Christina and I'll be your host today. I am one of the members here at Celebration. Let me take a look at you. <laughs> Gosh, you're beautiful. Um, have you ever felt like, like you're missing the Lord in advance? Like you know that you're going to meet this person, this amazing God that we talk about and we feel him, but I miss him, as I feel this so often, I feel like I miss him in advance, like, come on, hurry up, like, I miss you, I can, I can live another day without seeing you, praising you on this earth, but being able to be with him in heaven, the, the place that he promised us. I think of that often, and um, I'm sure what I'm thinking is just a glance of how it really will be, and I can't wait for that day. And the last song, oh, <laughs> spoke to me. So thank you for that amazing worship. Um, I'm sure you know what's next. Testimonies. We praise him and we worship him. But then when we go home, we do the same, and then we come back and share with everyone. So who has a testimony? Not all at once, please. <laughs> Make a line. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Paige, for those new people here today. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so my testimony I'm going to share with you this morning is actually from about, well, I don't know, one or two weeks ago. I had to go to the courthouse to do some paperwork, and uh, what I thought was going to take like an hour ended up taking like, you know, six hours. I was there like all day, and there was a lot of waiting, and um, I think it was like the third time I went back to the courthouse. Um, I was sitting waiting for the judge's decision to come out, and I was in this big room. It was it was this really, really, really big room, and everyone's just sitting around the walls on these benches, kind of like staring at each other quietly. <laughs> and then um, one person just starts talking to everybody. The whole room just starts talking with each other about our individual things we had going on. And um, I don't know what it was, but there was some lady that was like really drawn to me. She started telling me about um, the situation she was in with her husband and uh, what he'd been doing to her. 
and um, she's opened up her whole life to me. She was uh, disabled. <clears throat> she couldn't walk and she couldn't breathe. And she was really, really small, very, very small lady. She maybe weighed like 80 pounds or something. And um, she just came over and sat next to me and opened up to me and told me all of these things. And um, I'm just sitting there listening to her and I see through what's happening and uh, I just stop her and I ask if I could pray for her. Take in mind we're in a room full of like, I don't know, 15 people or something. <laughs> And she goes, oh, yes, yes. And she's Catholic. And, and she asks if I'll pray. And, you know, so we start praying together. And um, as soon as I get done, she stands up and she's crying. And she said that uh, she hadn't prayed in uh, 15 years since her sister died from cancer. And she's saying how, um, I don't know how I just changed her life and, and she hadn't talked to God in all these years and all this stuff. So anyways, that was good. We talked a little bit more and I said bye to her um, and I'm getting up to leave and the room's empty by this time. Everyone left. It was just her and this lady in the corner. I go to walk out and there's some lady and she goes, hey, will you pray for me? And she's like sitting across the room and she's in the corner and she, she's like rocking back and forth and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure, you know, and it was really weird. Like, I was supposed to be working all day, and I was supposed to go do an errand. I ended up being there all day, and, and for some reason, that wasn't the first person to open up to me either. I had, like, two other people come up to me earlier that day that just told me their whole lives, and uh, so I went and prayed with this other lady. Turns out she was um, being tormented by demons. She had, I don't even know, I, I think what I saw was, like, five that were, like, saying things to her in her head. They were tormenting her, and she... I prayed over her, I prayed over her a few times actually, and uh, she was trembling the whole time and rocking back and forth, and uh, she was like really scared, she was extremely scared, and uh, by the time we got done praying, she stopped shaking, and uh, she stopped like stuttering and everything, and she just looking me in the eyes, and she said, uh, I've been being attacked, and I said, yes. And she said, the enemy's been attacking me. I'm like, yes, he has. And she's like, yeah, no one believes me. Like, everyone thinks she's crazy, this lady. They think she's on drugs, and she's not. Very sweet lady. <clears throat> so I talk with her, and um, I explain to her what we just did. She can do any time, and she doesn't need me to be with her. And, um, yeah, it was really cool. We, we talked for a while after that, but I left, and I know her life has changed forever. That lady, she, but yeah, I just I just thought it was really crazy that I'm caught up in my day-to-day -day stuff. I have a million things I need to do. This is just one errand on my list. I go there, and God's just bringing all these people to me. And it didn't stop after that either. I went downstairs to the courthouse. I had another lady come up to me. And I had the same thing happen with another lady. And it was just really cool because I left, and I was just so full of life. I was so happy. I was just, like, beaming full of joy, and I just wanted to, like go talk with everybody I saw and everyone it's it was like everyone's just being attracted to me coming from left and right and it was really cool and uh I know you guys are putting situations on the day-to-day -day where you hear God talking to you and you might not listen sometimes but if you do listen you get filled back like a million times more than what you give out so I just want to encourage you all to do that any more amen thank you anyone else Christian from California. <laughs> Hi, it's very good to be back. She said to form a line, no matter what I do, I cannot form a line. You see, this body will not allow me. Anyways, round is a shape. Okay, you got it. So, <laughs> last week, Last week, I, um, I had to help uh, my, uh, my daughter move from one apartment to another in Washington, D.C. So I said, uh, you know what? I'm not going to leave this area until I go to the White House and pray. <sighs> I know it sounds spiritual, and I just wanted to go there as a son and just do an exercise of coming from above in a place where probably not too many people know what that even looks like. So I was sitting there and praying, coming from above, and all of a sudden I hear this grunt, grunt coming from, from a spirit, like, oh, 
another one of those. Now I have to leave. <laughs> so my, my testimony is that you, we are known. They know about us. And they have to leave. I was not casting out. I was not proclaiming, making big declarations. I was just coming from above. And it had to leave. So my encouragement to you and my testimony is that we are known. And be bold. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? I'm Judy from Louisville, Kentucky. I came here to see my new grandson, Shay Oren Geralds. I praise God. I ask you guys to pray for this little baby, Shay Oren Geralds. Thank you, God, for this new life. Amen. 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 Anyone else? Okay, I'll share mine. Um, I've been married for almost a year and a half now, and we have one car that it's ours. And this whole marriage, we've been driving two cars. The Lord has blessed us amazingly. We just realized like two weeks ago, excuse me, <coughs> that this whole time we've had like free cars. Well, Jeremy was owning his, a business, and that came with the business. But we had a car for about six months, and then someone else gave us a free car, and someone else gave us another free car, and we don't have them all now. It's just a rotation. It just kept rotating. And it's just an amazing how the Lord provides. We kept looking for a car to buy so we can own two cars. Obviously, two adults, two drivers. <laughs> And the Lord has blessed us amazingly, like even now. Somehow the Lord provides, always, always. And oh, I, I bless his name. This is amazing. And I, we didn't realize it till just like two weeks ago, how the Lord works. And this is amazing. Last, last time, anyone else? Okay. Uh, I would like to transition into giving, and giving is so, so important. We are on this earth. We don't just receive. We also give, and together with giving, uh, we in our church, we do a confession of faith. Can you put the... And we usually confess this together, but remember, these are not just words. These are things we speak into existence. Like we want souls to be saved. We want the sons of God to be revealed on this entire earth. It's not just Portland. It's not just America. It's everywhere else. Miracles. The Lord is a God of miracles. And he manifests. He heals. And not temporarily. He heals in abundance. If you were to hear people's testimonies all over the world, world how many healings and how the... The Lord works in everyone. I don't think we, we, we would be able to <laughs> stand how the Lord works and increase. He increases us every day in all things, and, and especially in the dominion of life. And then we get grace and favor. It keeps being multiplied to us. Then giving with joy for the kingdom. It's, this is how he set the whole kingdom to work, we give with joy. The, the kingdom is increased and expands. And obviously, this is my favorite, how the mountain of lack, for some reason, we are, we've been taught that, you know, that's what you have and that's what you got and don't ask for anything more. No. The mountain of lack can be removed and the Lord is the one that does that. And he wants to do it. He doesn't want us to be poor and stuck in a place where we can't raise from. So I, I love that confession of faith. So remember, when we say this together, this is 
speaking it into existence. Our words have so much power. And before we do that, I want to remind you about our covenant of giving, how the Lord established the tithing. We do tithe because that's what it says in the Bible. It says that he will open up the gates, the floodgates of heaven, and he will pour uh, abundance of blessing over us. And he will rebuke the devourer, which that means that daily things, daily deaths, uh, things that happen to us that are caused by the devourer, he will rebuke that and he will have no, no longer po power over us. And I don't know if you've experienced it, when you actually, you or the Lord rebukes the devourer, it's just like free. I don't know, you live freely, like he cannot touch me, he cannot touch my life, he cannot touch my family. He has absolutely no power. It's, it's an amazing feeling. And um, giving uh, to the poor, like alms, he says that whoever gives to the poor lends to the Lord. So that's another, that's another area of the covenant. And third is sowing with a purpose. The, the, the Bible says that whoever sows with a purpose that he has set in his heart, like whatever you do for someone else, Set a purpose in your heart, and the Lord will, uh, you will reap. He will grow it, and then you will reap from that. That's sowing with a purpose. So whatever you do, I encourage you, think of these things. Apply the covenant. This is how the Lord set it for us, and we just walk in it. So that's just kind of how this works. I'm sure you know. This is just a reminder. So let's say this together. Father... We thank you for souls being saved, the sons of God revealed, miracles and healing in abundance, increase of the dominion of life, grace and favor multiplied to us. We give up for the kingdom. The mountain of lack is removed. We give and we receive. Amen. And I'd like to pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for setting this covenant for us. And thank you for making things so clear and simple that we know what to do. And given in faith, we, just, we don't give just to give. We give in faith, the faith in you, that you are the provider. You provide, you multiply, you supply. We look to you, not to the church, not to each other. We give in faith, the faith we have in you. And we know that you will give us back and you will bless us in abundance, not just bits and pieces. You will bless us in abundance and you will give us prosperity in every area of our lives. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you for providing for us every day. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. And while we give, I like to end my hosting with thank you for getting involved. Thank you for doing what you're doing for our church. Every single thing matters. This is what makes this church function. Thank you for everyone that's doing something for our church, participating in doing anything. Thank you. Don't stop. Amen. I'd like to pass the mic. <laughs>